So the future of Star Wars collecting is in kind of a weird spot right now. Um, obviously, uh, the toys sell fine, but I think kids are buying less toys in general, and the people who are collecting are more people like us who are adults. Uh, and, you know, back in the early 2000s, they were like, I mean, they were putting out like, you know, dozens of action figures a year, and that's kind of slowed to a roll, and it means there's also less shelf space for um, large vehicles. Right. Uh, Hasbro announced a new program that's called HasLabs, and basically it's going to be sort of an in-house crowdfunding to make bigger projects happen. Uh, the first thing they're doing is going to be called, um, well, it's going to be Jabba the Hutt Sail Barge, uh, made for the four-inch scale. Uh, I think we have a video of this here. Uh, and basically, they've kind of they, they put up, they put up, put up like a Kickstarter video, being like, "We want to make more vehicles." Um, they definitely are sort of playing by prison rules here, and, and really trying to do a big one right out the gate. This yeah. thing is apparently they're going to show like kind of a mock up of it in a second. Uh, this thing is 14 pounds, uh, about four feet long, and uh, it's going to cost $500 a piece. Uh, and basically, uh, they have to get 5,000 people to back it slash pre-order it to make it happen. They're gonna show it in a second. Just show the thing. Just show us the sail barge. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the few vehicles from Star Wars that I, I don't think has ever been done full mm -hmm. scale. It's gonna include a Jabba the Hutt figure, which I'm stoked on. Uh, it actually looks like, it looks like one of the most fun toys ever. It's the kind of thing that I wish I had when I was like, you know, eight, because I'd put my toys all over it. Yeah, I mean, so I, you know, I collect Star Wars toys as you do. Uh, Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie of all time. Jabba's Palace, the sail barge, that entire 20 minutes is my favorite 20 minutes of any film. I have disposable income to spend on toys. I am not even remotely considering buying this. And I am squarely in the target demographic for this. So that's kind of a problem. And I was thinking about this last night. I was like, what would get me to purchase this? I think the $500 price point is kind of insane. Um, I wish it came with more figures. Uh, it, right now, it's all in the prototype phase, so we haven't really seen yeah, they had a, tons of paint all over it yet. They had a prototype on, on display at Toy Fair. Um, this almost feels like kind of just like a, not a, it's not a taunting, you know, but it feels like very much, like maybe they could have made it smaller or crappier. It looks really cool, but again, a lot of the people who are spending 500 bucks on toys are buying stuff like yeah. Hot Toys or import stuff from Japan. Or if you're that into vehicles, maybe you're buying like, I don't know, like a perfect grade Millennium Falcon and spending six months building it. To buy a, a play set that is 500 bucks made for, you know, five to $10 action figures is like it kind of, it just feels like it's kind of misses the mark, you know? It's, it's something, like a lot of people were drawn to Star Wars collecting because it is pretty accessible and affordable. It's not like buying high-end stuff and then suddenly you've got this incredibly high-end thing that um, they have to uh, they have to raise money for. Yeah. Also, uh, $500 times 5,000 backers in order to produce it, that's $2.5 million. So that's like a lot for a Jabba the Hutt sail barge that I feel yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's... It bums me out because I love this. I support this. I want this. Um, the Lego, what is it, Mines or formerly known as Kuso, uh, that entire sort of mantra of bringing ideas in and making them realities mm -hmm. uh, yielded some really cool Lego sets. Uh, but the, I think with that is that the, the cost was not offset onto the consumers until those were ready to be purchased. Right, but also consumers. Lego is something they are, that's entirely crowdsourced. The only thing that Lego has to do is the logistics of like the paperwork of, of making that. Yeah. Uh, Lego pieces already exist. They don't have to invent new pieces, like maybe some new ops for, for characters or maybe mm -hmm. like a new, I don't know, Ghostbusters tile or whatever. But in this case, this is entirely a new toy from the ground up. So obviously that's, that's more expensive. They've got to go to factories and look at paint ops and molds and everything. But like, with Lego, they're just like, it's all modular, you know? Mm -hmm. if somebody's do, you think, like, <clears throat> do you think they should have started this initiative with, like, a simpler kit? I Yeah, I absolutely think so. I mean, I think doing, like, a Sarlacc pit would have been awesome for, like, 100 bucks or 50, 70 bucks or something. Yeah, something, like I mean, some something a little bit smaller than an entire pleasure barge would which, have been, like, a good... Which, you know, now that I think of it, doesn't come with a Sarlacc pit, which is, like, kind of the, the known enemy. No, you just dig a hole in, in the sand outside in your That's yard. That's true. Thanks for watching our video on a $500 crowdfunded Star Wars set. Uh, it's really cool, but that's not the only people that are making their own Star Wars toys. The characters in Star Wars make their own Star Wars toys. Here's a rundown of some of our favorites. After that, our good friend Brian Flint at Super 7 is making some toys of his own. They're based on He-Man, Masters of the Universe, and they're gorgeous. So watch that too. Up at noon every Thursday at noon Pacific time on IGN, Twitch, YouTube, and Grundle. Don't click that last one.